Welcome to ShapeMaster Software. Today we're going to go through uh, demonstrating how to actually make some new shapes. Um, so we're going to do a curved panel and then a, a couple of different um, unusual shape panels. So this is the latest version of ShapeMaster Software, um, October 2016. Um, so you can set your job defaults, you can set your job number here, um, customer details. You can select the material, so there's a whole range of materials in there, so I'm just going to stick with the gold metallic. Uh, you can also set up all your default settings through here, so your company name, um, where do you want to output job numbers, um, layer names which goes to EasyNest or Enroute. Um, you can set up all those sorts of things as well, default default um, uh, layer names and things. Okay, so what I want to do today, I'm going to start with a very simple uh, rectangle here. So this is just a rectangle standard, nothing special with this one. <coughs> And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I want to set up a, go to shape, I want to set up a trapezium, um, and I want this one to be, I'm going to be 400, 400 high, um, this one's going to be 600 across the top, and uh, 420 across the bottom. Okay, so you can see that locks out these pages here, so they're no longer adjustable. Um, so this is what the shape is going to look like. So now what I want to do is go to Curve. So it just shows you each different part you can actually have. So the very top of it is going to be 1380 radius. Uh, and the bottom section, so the very bottom here, is going to be 400 off that, so minus 980. So I'm going in a negative curve. So there's the curve shape. Now what I want to do is add some flaps into it. So I go to Flaps. Uh, the depth of my flap is 50 mil and I want to add it in the bottom section here and here. So I've got these flaps into here as well. Um, so this is, and you can also adjust these. Um, so I can make this 100 if I wanted to, so you can see the length of the flaps. But what I can also do is, now that I've got this part here, every time you add in a flap, it adds in another page here, so the bottom left flap. And you see it now highlight that section in red. So what you can do, you can even control these individually per side. So it's 100 mil here and 50 mil here. Um, you can control each one individually. You can add in offsets and things like that as well. Um, and once you've actually got this part finished, uh, so that's, that's the exact shape I'm after, you press F12 and it adds it to the list in the background. As you can see here, it's added in one rectangle and there's the dimensions of it. Um, the next one I want to do is a little bit unusual. Um, so this one here, sorry, is not with that one. We're going to use a different part with this one. That was just a standard rectangle. This one here is what we call the rectangle multi. And what that lets us have is multiple um, sections in it. So I'm going to go four sections. Uh, and I'm going to do an unusual shape, which actually this one in the top top corner here. So this is the one I'm going to do, the rectangle 4, 2, 40. Um, and what we can do here, so you can specify, like if you want to get up and upper and lower sections as well, so you can actually make quite a complex part here. But this one here, all I want to do is go, uh, and you can go, now you can get control each, you can see which one I'm on now, each one of these. So what we can do, we can actually go back to the first page <coughs> and we can set the height on all of them. So they're all going to have a common height and I want the height to be uh, 240 mil. So they're all 240 mil. You can actually control these ones here individually if you want to say this one's only 50%. Uh, actually, if I had if I had upper and lower sections, so I can have this one here at say 50%. So you can control the upper and lower sections individually as well. But we don't have any of those as in this example. Uh, we can do the same thing with widths, but in this case, all these widths are different. So I'm going to leave them alone and come in here and manually control all these widths. So the first one is only 50 mil. The second one, and I'm just going to set all the widths to begin with, 400. Uh, 725 and the last one is 165 so that's the base shape of this piece here <coughs> now I'm gonna go back to the section and it again shows you which one you're on so I'm highlighted highlighted on this piece here so what I want to do is go into flaps and I just want to set the top and the bottom flap here and I'm gonna set this at 45 degrees Uh, and 45 degrees here, but they're also too, a little bit too long, these flaps, so they're only supposed to be, um, oops, sorry, wrong page, these are only supposed to be 
50 mil. Okay, so that's where they fit better. So these ones are 50 mil long. Um, so I can go back to here. Section 2, and I want to add in, uh, same again, so I want to go to flaps. And I add in top and bottom flap. Now, <coughs> this is not um, exactly what we want that finish shape to look like, so it's not a problem. We're all doing is oh, adding in flaps and the angles, which I'm going to need 45 on each of these now. That one, that one. And we can adjust the length and the size of these in a minute. So at least we've got the flaps in place. So I do the same thing for this one here. So 45 on top and bottom on. And they're going to have 45 on each end, top and bottom. Oops, getting a bit excited with the keys there. And in the last one, step four, same again, we're going to go top and bottom, but we're only going to put 45 on these two edges here. So the image shows us <coughs> where we can have different shapes and things as well, because you can end up with a um, eight-sided shape if you really wanted to by angling with these bits through here as well. Um, so that's roughly what the part looks like. So what we now need to do is every time we add in a page, added in flaps, it added more of these things. So um, it says area one, two, three, four, and this is one, two, three, four as it goes up here. So area one is fine, that's finished. Area two is now this green section here. So what I want to do is go to the top. And this one here is a little bit unusual, um, but I want to take the top and bottom here the height of this one to be 165. That goes to 165. Um, and what I'm going to do, I need to... I th need to work this one out. So it needs to come in 235. And that's not entirely what I wanted to do. I need to put this one back to 50. And put in a, a secondary flap. That's how I did it and get rid of that one. So this one here goes to 115. And 115. So that gives me the shape I want, but I want to offset this one here by 235. And this here goes to 0.1. And it's not 235, it's 235 less the angle actually, so it's going to be 185. Like that. That's what it looks like. Because I'm coming from this point here now. So I'm coming from the end of the angle. Not from not from the end. <coughs> okay, so that's what that looks like. So now I can go down to the bottom flap and do the exact opposite. So I come into here, I just turn on Include secondary flap. That one goes, I think, backwards. So 115, O needs to come in 185. No, other direction. Thought I was going to do that one wrong. 185, and this one here needs to go to 0.1. So we've just put it point 0.1 instead of 0, just makes it easier to calculate. So that's what that piece looks like there. That's what that looks like there. This middle section now, so we go to, this one here is quite easy. This one here just goes out to 165 and 165. And same as that bottom one. So that middle bit was the hardest of all of them, just trying to get that to cut out like that. Uh, but again, once you have the dimensions, it's actually not that difficult. And the bottom one, whoops, 165. There we go. So again, that's what that shape now looks like. Um, again, F12, it'll add it into the list behind us. So that is possibly one of the more complex shapes that we would, would make. And once you've actually made it, you can go back to the shape page. Uh, you can view it in wireframe. So it shows you what it's actually going to look like, and you can start folding it up. You can also put it into a textured 3D um, and see what happens when it all folds up as well. So that's what it's going to look like whoops, when it's folded up. Um, 
I just need a tin of colour on for those flaps, but it turns into an L-shaped box anyway. And you can see with in the wireframe, so that's where it's all folded up, how it all fits together. So it, you can see that it all fits together quite nicely, all the parts are the right size and the right shape, and everything fits in there very nicely. Um, so there's that shape. The last shape I want to do today is again another, not overly complex, um, but just a little bit different. Um, so what I want to do here is this one here, we're going to have two wide and we're going to go up and down on all of them. So it's actually going to end up like this. And what we're going to do is we can set, yeah, we can set these ones this width this time. So this time I want the width to be seven, 775. Um, and the height, no, all the heights are different. So I'll leave the heights manually this time. Um, so this time we're going to go to sections and we're going to section, we start with this one here. And this is 775 by 450. This one here is 450. But I want to actually override it because it's not 775, it is 500. So then we go to, let's just go down to the bottom. So this one here is 775 wide and 320. 320 high. This one here again 320 high. But the height is 500, which is now copy the one above it. This one here is again 775 by 430. That's 430. And this one here is 500. 3, 380 that is. That's 380 high. Slightly different to the other ones. And 500 high. Uh, 500 wide. <coughs> Okay, so what we want to do here is this is a little bit different. We actually want to do cutouts through here so I can actually fold in these areas. So what we're going to do, we'll start we'll start in the bottom corner, make it easy. We'll start from the bottom, work our way up. So what we can do here is, th now this demonstrates, <laughs> this will make a little bit more sense what it is. It now says bottom right width, bottom right height. So bottom right here. And what I want to change is I want to go full height. I want to bring this side in by 113. So it's the full height. So you can actually, if you put that onto none, I can say this is only, say, example 50. So I've now cut out 50 high by 113 wide. Or I can go full full width, which I actually do the whole from this corner out to here. So if you go full height, say full height, I want to cut in 113. Now what I want to do here is I want to add a flap there and there. And this time the flaps are only going to be 20 mil as well. So they need a tiny little flap on it. Uh, and what I do want to do is cut out, not that one. On both of them. Okay, minus 45 on that one is what we want. Okay, so I put a minus 45 and it automatically calculates, say minus 45 would automatically calculate the 315. That's fine. So the next one is here. So we want to go to, now again, bottom left corner. We want to go full height and we're going to come in the same again, 113. So we've got an evenly spaced one there, flaps on the bottom and on the right. Uh, and on here, we're going to go minus 45 again. Fantastic. There's that one done. So now this one here is fairly straightforward. This just has a one flap on the right, but it's going to have angles on both sides, so they match in with these as it folds. This one here, exactly the same again. So flap just on that one side. And that one, cut the corners. Now, top corner. This one here, this is where it gets a little bit different because we have different heights here, so the angles will be different. Um, 
So what we're going to do is we're going to put in this one here. So we get top right, we want full height, and this one here, 113, 113. We're going to add in flaps to left and top. So this one here goes to minus 45. Top corner, oops, sorry, my bad, bottom one. Top corner stays square, that corner stays square. So that one's complete. Now, this one here is the most complex, <laughs> not overly complex. It is the top left. We're going to go for a full height again. And this one here needs to come in 231 to make those angles join up correctly when it folds up. So the length here is actually the same as the length here, which I've, we've calculated um, manually. So we know what they actually need to be. So I want the top and the right. And just that bottom right there needs to have an angle on it. Okay, so there's that shape. And the last thing we need to do is go change the length of the flaps to 20. And they've all just changed to 20 and that will all fit in now. So um, as you can as you can check again, you can go back to your wireframe view, rotate the part around, um, start folding it up. The only thing it doesn't do is it doesn't, you can't specify the actual length of the fold. So we know this is only going to fold up to about this length here where they join up. Um, so those sides there join up. And if it felt if you could actually fold these parts in a little bit more, so I can fold it all the way up, but then it doesn't. You can see what's going on here. So if we get these, they're not all folding at 90 degrees. That's the issue. So not a major issue, but you can see how it how it actually works. Um, and you can see you've got your, your flaps and things on there as well as they're folding in as well. So that's what that part will look like. And again, if you wanted to go add toggles or anything else, you can actually add them into these, into all your um, onto your flaps and things as well. So once that one's done, F12, it adds it into the new, uh, the new list of all your parts. So you can see your overall sizes. So from here, you can actually export it straight out to um, EasyNest or NRoute, uh, and it will automatically tool path because we've specified the layer names, all those sorts of things as well. So thank you very much for your time. I hope you've enjoyed ShapeMaster software.